Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Okay, so I started with these distance problems, giving examples of things like if there's two cars driving away from each other in perfectly opposite directions and they're going 55 miles an hour and 35 miles per hour and they're driving for so many hours out and all those, you know what I'm talking about, those kind of problems. So in part one, I went through three different examples of those problems where sort of you have one variable, excuse me, I'm trying so hard, I always get the hiccups, where you have one <laughs> variable you're dealing with. Well, there's a bonus problem, which is pretty much like a three variable problem. And this is when you're talking about adding in currents and airflows, things like that. It was originally supposed to be in part one, ah, part one ended up being like 15 minutes and I knew this was gonna be long. So I decided, like I, I knew it was long after I recorded it. And I'm like, okay, this has to be split up. So again, this is originally all one, but I thought it'd be better in two smaller videos instead of one like 30 minute lesson, a little more digestible. All right, with that being said, on with the show. And finally, we have this mess of a problem, which actually came to me from a student this past week. This was an actual problem they had. And it adds in currents into the mix, like currents, like water flow. Okay. Um, this type of problem, you'll also see it represented as you know, planes flying with the wind or against the wind. Same thing. You have a force that's speeding up or slowing down. So the rates are different in all directions. Woohoo. Okay. I'm trying to muster up enthusiasm, but this program has been crashing on me. This is the fourth time I have gone through this problem. <laughs> so my enthusiasm for insane distance problems is waning. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm gonna keep it up. Keep it up. I can do it. All right, so I have a boat that's starting at this point. It can go downstream, it's with the current, it goes 24 miles downstream. It also has a route where it goes eight miles upstream, so it's against the current. I'm given that the trip downstream with the current is one hour shorter than the trip upstream. I also am told that the speed of the water, speed of the water, the speed of the boat, again, fourth time, fourth time I'm saying all this, speed of the boat in still waters is three times the speed of the current. Speed of the current. Okay. I know I don't have the greatest handwriting. I'm sorry. Okay. So, and they want us to calculate the speed of the boat in still water, the speed of the current, and the travel times for each of these. There's a lot going on here, and we're going to have a lot. It's more variables than you think, and it's going to take some substitution things to figure it out, but we will get there. All right. First things first. Distance equals rate times time. That's our same thing. We're going to come back to it again and again. We're doing it again. We don't know our rates this time. We do know our distances. I have a distance of 24 miles and I have a distance of 8 miles. Okay, what are the times? Well, they didn't tell us that either, but they did tell us that the time for the 24 mile trip was one, and I actually wrote long, shorter. That's my mistake, sorry. I'm looking at the problem now. You'd think after saying it four times, it's one hour longer for the 24 mile trip. Sorry about that. Okay, so the time for the eight mile trip would just be T and the, tr the time for the 24 mile trip would be T plus one. I'm gonna make it through this. I'm going to, I have to, I have to finish. Okay, so T plus one, because it's one hour more. Okay, so if distance equals rate times time, let's go over to the side over here and just kind of look at these, like distance equals rate times time. If I want to get rate by itself, again, just looking at this, not at anything else, what would I do? If I want rate by itself, I would divide both sides by T. So rate equals D divided by T. 
So that's what I'm going to do over here. Same thing. My rate is going to equal D divided by T. So on top it's 24 divided by T plus 1. And on the bottom it's 8 divided by T. Okay. So just like, you know, it, it's the same thing as if I said, I, I drove 50 miles and it took me two hours. How fast was I going? You would say, oh, 50 miles and it took you two hours. You were going 25 miles per hour. It's the same thing we're doing. We're just using variables. Okay. So we're going to set that to one side for just a second. Now we're going to deal with the whole thing with the current. All right. I'm going to call the boat's speed B. So this is the boat's normal speed with no current is B. And the current I'm going to say is C. I know, really creative, but we're going to try to keep it simple. I'm told that the speed of the boat in still water is equal to three times the speed of the current. B equals 3C. Okay. Thing with uh, currents or air, uh, like in a plane where the air is pushing against the plane, is increasing or decreasing its speed. Here's what it is. So for uh, when the boat is going with the current, the current is helping it, its speed is B plus C. That's going with the current when it's being helped. When it doesn't have the current, when it's against it, it's B minus C. That's against the current because it's taking speed away. Okay. All right. So we know that B is equal to three times C. Okay. I'm going to use substitution and plug that into these two. I'm going to substitute 3C for B. So in the first one, I'm plugging 3C in where B was. So 4C is my speed with the current helping me. And I'm going to plug it into that second one. I'm going to plug 3C in for that one, for that second B. And so 3C minus C is 2C. So that's my speed going against the current. The current is hurting me. So I can go twice as fast, 4C, 2C. I'm going twice as fast. So those are my two speeds, 4C and 2C. Okay. And so then again, I'm looking, 4C is twice that of 2C. Okay. Now this um, rate up here, oh, come on, there we go. Our top rate there, that's the rate with the current. Okay, 24 over T plus 1 is my rate with the current. So that's the same as down here for C, okay? It's going step by step. This will all come together, I promise. Okay. Our second rate, 8 over T, is the rate against the current. So 8 over T is 2C. I am trying to get rid of variables. I've already gotten rid of B, the boat's speed. Now I'm going to try to get rid of C, the current speed. We've got, it's like one of those problems where you have an X, a Y, and a Z variable. You're just trying to eliminate one variable at a time. So I've eliminated the B. Now I'm going to eliminate the C, and we're going to have just T left. Okay, I'm going to scoot over a little bit here just so we can kind of look just at this for right now. Okay, so I have 24 over 2 plus 1 equals 4C. 8 over T equals 2C. I want to set these things equal to each other, but I have to make them match. So... If I can get this 2C to be 4C, then these equations will match and I can do some substitution. So 2C times 2 is 4C. 
So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 2. So 2 times 8 over t equals 2 times 2c. So I'm going to get 16 over t equals 4c. And now, ladies and germs, and my dad always used to say that, ladies and germs, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and cats of all ages, we have a 4c and a 4c. 24 over t plus 1 is 4c, and 16 over t is 4c. So now, oh, I can do what I've been wanting to do this whole time is, I can set 24 over t plus 1 as equal to 16 over t because they are both equal to 4c, so I can do that. They are, you know, they're equivalent. All right, so now, oh, we're in the home stretch. We can cross multiply, and we get 24t equals 16 times t plus 1. I'm going to distribute that, and I get 24t equals 16t plus 16. I subtract 16t from both sides, scoot up again, and I get 8t equals 16. I divide both sides. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself in my head. Come on, back up. There we go. I divide both sides by 8 and t equals 2. Okay, woohoo! We got t equals 2. We go all the way back over here. And I'm going to start replacing things. I'm going to write it in rainbow so it's pretty easy to see. All right, so t is 2. So now I know t plus 1 is 3. And my rate, 8 divided by t, 8 divided by 2. Okay, so I know that rate is now 4. And my other rate which is 24 divided by t plus 1. Again, t plus 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. So I have my two rates. Okay? And if you kind of look at this, if you want to know now the speed of the boat and the speed of the current, there's two kind of ways you can look at this. One, you can look at it from sort of a, a logical point of view of saying, okay, thinking with my math logic brain, that if I have a, a rate of speed and if I'm going upstream, something is added to it or just subtracted to it. And if I'm going downstream, something is added to it and it's the same on both sides, it would have to be the number that's directly between the two of them. So it would have to be six. So that's sort of like a little math, kind of like you might look at it and think about it that way. The more um, using what equations we already have method would be, okay, I have over here 8 divided by t is equal to 2c, okay? I've said that t is 2. So 8, why isn't it letting me erase? Just erase. 8 divided by, it doesn't want me to write a 2. 8 divided by 2 equals 2c. What's 8 divided by 2? 4. 4 equals 2 times c. So c equals 2. And I also know b is equal to 3 times c. So b is equal to 6. So there's another way to get it. And that, finally, oh, we have it. We have our boat speed. It is 6 miles per hour in still current. We have the current speed. It is 2 miles an hour. And the time to travel the 8 miles is 2 hours, and the time to travel the 24 miles is 3 hours. Shoo wee Okay, so something like that, it can be very daunting because there's just so many steps, and we actually have three variables going into this. Just look for ways to try to get rid of those variables. You can't solve something that has three variables in it. Just like if you just have an equation, like here's an equation with three variables, what are they? You can't do that. You have to have multiple equations and then you have to start eliminating variables and using your multiple equa equations to eliminate variables. And that's what we did. Whew, I hope that was 
comprehensible, especially after my fourth time <laughs> explaining it. Ah, goodness gracious. So that is our very lengthy explanation of, I tried to cover all the different types of distance, rate, time problems that you can come across. I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions on it or any sort of topic you'd like to see more of, please leave them those uh, comments in the below. Uh, my tongue is failing me again four times. My computer kept crashing for some reason. And anyway, that's it for today. Please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See y'all later. Bye.